in your sniper build, do this. Yeah, with that one shot, but you get the idea. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to another build video. Today I'm showcasing my Dread Edict Tip of the Spear Sniper build, the full stop. As you can probably guess, uh, this setup is purpose-built around the exotic SVD Marksman Rifle, the Dread Edict. Uh, you can see it's still missing attachments as of the making of this video, but I digress. <laughs> Um, there was a couple of challenges to overcome with this particular weapon. Um, the first being the Edict's handling. Uh, it bucks like a mule under normal circumstances. Uh, it's high recoil, makes follow-up shots very difficult uh, when you're rapid firing. Uh, and if we aren't going to take advantage of the Dread's rate of fire, we might as well be using something else. So let me show you what it looks like under normal circumstances. I'm going to slap on a build here that doesn't have a single lick of stability. All right, we'll go with the Fairview Wraith. All right. We're going to use uh, this part of the range here for this demonstration. Let me slap on the Dread. Set this to... We'll just set this to 45. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> under normal circumstances... Actually, you can barely even see him. Under normal circumstances, all right, I'm going to center it and I'm going to let go of my stick. This is its normal scope sway pattern. So you can see it gets pretty aggressive, wanders around. Now I'm going to get a full clip here and then I'm just going to rapid fire uh, and I'm not going to adjust for the recoil just so you guys get an idea of what this looks like. All right, so pretty unruly. Um, so what I did with the build is I integrated a couple of roles of weapon handling to combat that, uh, as well as using the uh, specialization uh, sharpshooter. And let me show you why before we get further into this. So we're running the sharpshooter specialization mostly for this 15% increased stability, reco reduced recoil, and faster reacquisition. Uh, that faster reacquisition, uh, from my understanding, uh, simply means that the enemy heads are stickier. So it makes it a little easier to land headshots. Uh, other perks of this particular specialization, obviously you've got the 15% increased headshot damage with rifles and marksman rifles. Obviously a no-brainer. The flashbangs are very utilitarian. I enjoy these immensely. Uh, the repair kit. Very nice. You get 100% of your armor back and, and uh, removes status effects uh, if you're under status. It increases your resistance to um, bleed, poison, burn for 20 seconds. So very nice. Uh, other niceties on this build is you start to, excuse me, regenerate marksman and rifle ammo every 10 seconds uh, when you're in cover. Uh, and then you get a little extra armor while you're in cover. So all very nice things. So uh, that stabilization in combination with the weapon uh, handling rolls on this build um, reduces its sway. Now I'm gonna center it and then we're just gonna let it drift, okay? So I'm not correcting for drift. This is just its natural pattern. You can see that it is reduced. It's still there, but it is reduced. And now I'm going to make sure I have a full clip and then I'm just gonna fire uh, without adjusting for recoil. And this time I'm actually gonna fire faster just so you get an idea. Last time I was kind of pacing my shots, this time I'm gonna be pretty close to its max rate of fire here. As you can see, it doesn't kick nearly as hard, all right? So, um, as you can tell, it, it brings the recoil and scope sway down to a more reasonable level. I would like to reduce it further, but um, the problem we would run into is it would reduce the damage output of the um, dread edict to the point where we're not getting the one hit uh, headshots and that was my goal from the beginning with this build is I wanted to make something that would allow me to land one shot headshots with a high RPM uh, marksman rifle and I succeeded with this build as far as I can tell 
Um, you know, being a high RPM marksman rifle, naturally the damage per shot is going to be lower than weapons like the White Death or Mantis. You know, uh, granted their RPM is much lower, um, but that's that's just a, something that's inherent to higher RPM marksman rifles. So I decided to run an all red build uh, with heavy investment into headshot damage since its strengths, the dread strengths, lie in headshots. Um, show you here. So obviously you've got that 111% additional headshot damage. Uh, and just marksman rifles in general, they all have that uh, core attribute on there, headshot damage. Uh, and then it's talent, full stop. If you shoot enemies, it builds a stack, cap at 20. Headshots are going to give you two stacks, and each of those stacks is going to give you 2% weapon damage and 5% headshot damage. And then that last little bit of text at the bottom that says headshot kills with the Dread Edict restore all bullets in the magazine. So you can fire until your heart is content without having to reload as long as you're getting headshot kills. So this all works together. You know, you're getting the one-shot headshot kills, it's replenishing the ammunition, you don't have to reload, it's in amping up the damage as well along the way. Um, so I wanted to play into that. Uh, this isn't a crit chance, crit damage build, so we're not gonna be aiming for the body. Uh, I also wanted a build that doesn't require me to stay out of cover for extended periods of time since, you know, my agent's going to be pretty squishy with an all red build. Uh, and he's going to be unable to heal without help from a healing talent, a skill, or using an armor kit. Um, so that eliminated using something like a focus chest. Uh, let me show you focus here. Okay, so here's a focus chest. One of the best focus chests. Actually, it's the focus chest you can put on for most applications. You got the pristine example named Araldi chest. You've got perfect focus that increases total weapon damage by 6% every second you're aiming, uh, up to 60%. So if you're scoped in for 10 seconds, you're you're reaping the benefits of max stacks. Unfortunately, with perfect focus, this still falls short of giving enough damage for the dread edict for it to, to be able to do one-shot headshots. You're still looking at a two-shot kill. For some people, that might not be a big deal, but again, I wanted to build this around one-shot headshots, and I didn't want to I didn't want to have a bunch of prerequisites to reaching that, meaning I didn't want to have a bunch of separate damage talents that you have to proc by doing X, Y, and Z, and build it, and build it, and build it, and then you can go into, into headshots. I wanted it to be quick. I wanted to just quickly just get right into it, and I'm just going to demonstrate that here again real quick, the way this works. Break out the TAC-50 to get that headshot on an Elite or anything less. Rip out the SVD. And you are doing one-shot headshots from that point forward. Uh, this works with purples as well. So if you uh, use your, your 50 cal BMG here, and you kill a, a purple bar with it to get the proc, and then you switch to the SVD, that'll also be enough damage to start getting one-shot headshots with elites. You can't do that with red bars, unfortunately. Just FYI, but I'm gonna get into the build build breakdown here in just a second. Um, so we eliminated focus because this build needs to be snappy and mobile and we're constantly repositioning and I didn't want my head to be sticking out a bunch uh, while enemies are shooting at me. Uh, so that also eliminated something like Sawyer's knee pads, these guys right here. A lot of people like to run Sawyer's knee pads with sniper builds, um, but I can't hold still. I'm always moving, so that makes this exotic essentially useless to me. If you can, if you can hold still long enough, you could run this with the build. Um, I honestly haven't tested its uh, damage output with this exotic equipped, but that's because I have no intention of running this exotic. Like I don't really care if I can achieve one-shot headshots with this. I'm not going to run it because I'm not going to be utilizing its its talent, which is stand your ground. You can't be staggered, and it increases your weapon damage by 3% each second you're not moving. So you got to hold still for a full 10 seconds. Or it stacks, it stacks up to 10 until you start moving, and then, and then you lose it. So you got to hold still for a decent amount of time to really reap the benefits of using this exotic. So I, I, I wrote that one off early on. So after much testing in the range and in the open world, this build that you're looking at right now is what I settled on. You know, we've got a decent amount of handling. You can one-shot the elites uh, with minimal damage stacking necessary. 
And there's no need for uh, prolonged exposure while I'm trying to, you know, pop enemy melons. So uh, this build performs great in solo heroic, but you're going to lose that one shot headshot potential with group play because of the enemy health scaling. Uh, with all the damage talents at max stacks, uh, the dread does just shy of 13 million headshot crits and right around 12.5 million non-crit headshots. And in case you didn't know, uh, elites are sitting right around 10 million health. I'm not sure if it's exactly 10 million health, but it's it's right around that area. So with one headhunter stack from an elite kill, we're doing just over 10 million non-crit headshot damage. So in other words, it does just enough damage to start that chain of elite targets while you're solo. Um, so let me go over each gear and weapon piece starting with uh, my FAMAS. So I chose the FAMAS because um, it is one of the top ARs for starters. So it's already got a really nice high damage output. Um, it's also very stable and very accurate. And you can see that it's actually sitting at max stability right now. I don't have any stability mods uh, on here whatsoever. I've got just critical hit chance, critical hit chance, and critical hit chance with a, uh, uh, 20 round mag on there. Um, that maximum stability is coming from the sharpshooter specialization uh, along with the two rolls of weapon handling that I have on this build. Um, and here's the star of the show, the Dread Edict. You can see it still doesn't have any attachments on it for some reason, I figured the devs would have fixed this by now. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. So it does have attachments on there that are just really not showing. Uh, it's got the 40% headshot damage uh, scope, uh, it's got the 15% uh, weapon handling um, magazine. It's got 10% stability, something. I'm assuming there's supposed to be a grip there. And then 10% uh, critical hit chance uh, barrel. We kind of already went over how the talent works. Um, for the FAMAS, I, I kind of forgot to mention, I ran it with preservation. Uh, reason being, this is how I'm going to heal. And this is how I'm going to fend off the enemy if they get a little too close to me. Uh, preservation is a very strong healing talent. Um, if you kill an enemy, you get 10% armor over five seconds, but headshots improve the repair by an additional 10%. And the whole goal of this build is to aim for the head. It, there's, there's no critical hit chance or damage anywhere on this build. So both for the FAMAS and for the Dread, I am aiming for the head. And I will show you here in a second how strong it is, even with the FAMAS and even with nothing but headshots. So we've got the uh, tip of the spear, four piece. Two pieces are going to give you that signature weapon damage. Three pieces are going to give you that 10% weapon damage. And then four pieces uh, is where the uh, talent kicks in. You've got the aggressive recon. So you deal damage with your signature weapon. And that increases your total weapon damage by 20% for 60 seconds. And then you're going to automatically generate signature weapon ammo every 60 seconds. Uh, this plays hand in hand with how we're running the SVD. Um, and on each one of these pieces, I'm rolling weapon damage, headshot damage with a headshot damage mod. Uh, this piece, uh, weapon damage, headshot damage. This piece, weapon damage, headshot damage. Weapon damage, headshot damage. <laughs> and then we get the two high-end pieces here. So we've got the named chest chain killer. Um, for the perfect headhunter. So after you kill an enemy with a headshot, your next weapon hit within 30 seconds deals an additional 150% of that killing blows damage. Damage is capped at 800% if your weapon damage uh, or capped at 800% of your weapon damage. Uh, it's raised to 12, 1,250% if your headshot damage is greater than 150%, which ours is. I'll show you those stats here in a second. Uh, now, for the chest piece, you don't have to run the chain killer name chest. You can run like a regular version of, of Walker and Harris um, with standard headhunter. Um, and that'll do just as well. You can also run a um, Providence chest piece with headhunter and it'll do it'll, you'll get similar numbers so you do have some options here the one piece that you need to keep on here is an Alraldi piece so you can you can move these two pieces around you could have an Alraldi chest here with headhunter and a walker backpack uh, or a providence backpack but you do need to have at least an Alraldi on here um, the walker and or uh, providence well or providence i guess in this case uh, can be moved to either one of these positions uh, and for the Raldi backpack, 
Um, reason why this needs to stay on here is for that 10% marksman rifle damage. Because um, we're, we're riding that line at the 10 million mark. And if we do any less damage, we're not getting the one-shot headshot kills after that initial volley. Um, so you're, you're going to want this on here. Um, and you can see it's rolled to headshot damage, headshot damage. I've got the weapon handling roll on there and then running it with vigilance. Um, and you'll need to keep it on vigilance. I've tested it with composure and concussion. <clears throat> and neither of those work with this build. Uh, but you can move the brands around, like I mentioned. Um, but we don't want to reduce the damage too much. Um, unless you're okay with multiple headshots to down a target, or uh, maxing out procs before you start getting the one-shot headshot kills. Um, but again, this is just the way that I have it set up. Um, you can you know, feel free to move some stuff around, try something else out. This is by no means the only you know, the only way to run a Dread Edict build. Um, but this is the way that I run it. Uh, and you can see for the skills, we've got the turret. I love running the turret um, pretty much on all my builds. I take this thing everywhere with me. Uh, it's great for distraction. It does damage to the enemies and it stays up for a very long time. So this is um, superior to the decoy, unless you're running something like the Mantis, in which case it plays hand in hand with the decoy. So uh, in all other instances, the turret, in my humble opinion, is superior. Uh, and then, of course, I'm running the Reviver Hide for those instances where I go down. I get a little too aggressive with my with my build. Get caught out in the open. Um, so, as far as farming these pieces go, um, Countdown. Just go into Countdown. Set it to the tip of the spear. You should be able to get these pieces that you need in, like, a single run. Because the core attribute is weighted to weapon damage. I mean, it's you're going to get the weapon damage core attribute, period, with this build. You'd have to reroll it to something else if you wanted something other than weapon damage there. So you're really just looking for something with a high enough roll that you're not going to have to just dump a bunch of resources into optimizing it. Um, and then you're just going to reroll the attribute, the one attribute that these come with, to headshot damage. Very easy. This is very easy to farm for. Chest piece, um, it took me a while to farm for this piece. Specifically, I wanted the weapon handling and headshot damage on there. So I had to do a few runs of countdown to get my hands on this. I've got plenty of other uh, chain killer chests, just none that had the weapon handling headshot damage combo. So you might be luckier than me, but I ended up running uh, countdown probably about 10 times before this specifically dropped. It dropped from a hunter, by the way. And I had it set to Walker and Harris uh, as my target of loot. And the Raldi backpack should be pretty easy to come by. I believe the attributes are weighted towards headshot damage or headshot damage related things, if that makes any sense. So uh, when it drops more times than not, it'll drop with headshot damage already on there. And you're just going to reroll the second one to weapon handling. This one was really easy to farm for. Uh, highly recommend uh, Countdown. Um, for farming purposes, just in all cases, honestly. I don't know where else you would uh, get get the volume of loot as quickly as you can by playing Countdown. Uh, and just a quick uh, expertise disclaimer, uh, the, the damage numbers that you're going to see, um, I've got these expertise to 10, um, which is right at the point where exotic components come into play. So. If you've got a bunch of extra resources, this is really easy to do. This is really easy to get to 10. Uh, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna lose that much resources getting it to 10. So this is gonna be pretty easy to duplicate, in my opinion. Uh, and let me show you my stats here. So the FAMAS, we're sitting at 45% critical hit damage, 25% critical hit chance, 165% headshot damage. And then we've got uh, the Dread Edict sitting at uh, 20% critical hit chance, 45% critical hit damage, and 276% headshot damage. And I've got a pistol. It's the Mozambique Special. I basically run these with all uh, my headshot builds. I guess I could show that. I mean, a pistol is a pistol. <laughs> it's got pistol damage, damage to target out of cover, and it's got perfect break basket on it. So you land body shots, you get stacks for headshot damage, uh, and then... Um, you aim for the head and you get additional damage bonus on there. Um, so let me show you the FAMAS real quick since I promised I would show that. So without any of the of the procs up here, I'm just gonna 
drill this target in the head here. You can see that just right off the rip, it's got a decent amount of damage. Now I'm going to go ahead and proc that additional damage from tip of the spear. Doesn't have to be a headshot. Bring the target in a little closer here. Instant melt. This is very strong. Bring him a little closer. Instant melt. So I'm going to do one more demonstration how this build works. So let me get rid of my stacks here. The headhunter, headhunter stacks are gone. So the way you want to play this is you want to have your specialization weapon in hand and you're going to aim for the head. It needs to be a headshot in order to get this ball rolling. It can be an elite or below. Ideally, you want to hit a, a, an elite. You can hit a purple bar, but an elite will, will serve you better. So you're going to hit the elite, and then you're going to switch, and then you can go to take it. Just like that. So that is how this build works. Um, just as an extra bonus here, I'll show you uh, the apparel that I'm wearing. I don't see many people running this. This is actually a, um, uh, a full uniform. And I'm not entirely sure at what point you get this. I think once you unlock a node on the Sharpshooter Specialization tree, you have access to this uniform. It does replace uh, all the other pieces of your uniform, so it doesn't really matter what you're running in any of these other slots because this is like an all-inclusive build. It's or all-inclusive um, outfit. It's got the shoes and the pants and the hat and all that stuff. The only thing you can change on here is your mask or your mask's appearance. Uh, and I am running. What do I have on here? I've got the tip of the spear mask on there with a white shader to kind of eliminate the uh, camo pattern that's normally on the sides of that to kind of give it that sleek look. Uh, and then the gloves. You can customize the gloves. I believe this is a Walker and Harris. Quote me on that here. Walker Harris. Where is Walker and Harris? There it is. These are the gloves I'm wearing. And that's the outfit. So before I show off the build out in the game world, uh, let me preface by saying that I am a very average sniper and I struggle a little with this build. I'm not going to lie. I feel... Like it would do exceedingly well in the hands of somebody who's like a headshot pro versus my own, but this will give you a general idea of how the build performs. And I apologize in advance for the extreme amateurness you're about to witness, but don't let my performance turn you off from trying out this build for yourself. You might find that you really, really super like it. Um, so we're just gonna go take a checkpoint. We'll go take my favorite checkpoint. And I scoured the internet looking to see if anybody had a, a similar build to this, like somebody used the tip of the spear dread edict combo for anything. Honestly, I couldn't find a single video. So, and, you know, I apologize if there is somebody out there that's already made a video and it's old news. And, you know, please don't go down into the comments section and flame me that you, you know, you came up with this like six months ago or something. Um, I did try and find other videos to see what other people are running. Uh, usually with the Dread Edict, it's either aces and eights. I don't know why I'm doing this, it's force a habit. <laughs> Sorry, I need to head to the, uh, I need to get to the checkpoint here. Um, usually it's, it's either aces and eights, or it's like an all red DPS build of some kind. Um, pretty standard for the, for the Dread Edict. It's just, you're not gonna get that, that one hit. They didn't even see me. No, I'm not going to fight you guys. I'm not interested. Uh, their builds tend to be, you know, uh, two hits, two hit headshots. And I did actually originally start this out with aces and eights. I just wasn't happy with the damage numbers. How can they see me? How can you possibly see me? I'm sorry. I'm too far away. I call shenanigans. Well, let's see here. I don't want to really bother with the red guys. Yeah, it looks like we're going to bother with the red guys. Oh. 
get that going. Go. I'm gonna struggle against robotics. This is not really a head for you to shoot. ideal situation here, but I want to show you guys, you know, this is realistic. This is what you're going to encounter. This isn't, um, you know, all staged or whatever. I've seen some pretty, oh, that hurts. I've seen some pretty dicey, uh, build videos where it's very controlled. That's fine and all, but I'd rather, you know what, I'd rather show you the real thing. I'm hitting him in the head. Come on, stick your head up. Thank you. All right, enough of that. I would like to get to the checkpoint, please. Thank you. Again, I'm not the greatest sniper player. And this build requires a little bit more finesse than my Mantis build, or like a Nemesis build. So, I'm not saying keep your expectations low, but I'm also not saying keep your expectations low. It would also help if I can hit what I'm shooting at. Okay. Pay attention to my, pay attention to my, uh, turret. Don't pay attention to me. You don't want to shoot at me. You want to shoot at him. Uh, where's that going to land? Oh, there's somebody to the side of me. Get him, little buddy. Thank you. here. You know, and it is pretty strong um, for multi-tapping too. Like, it doesn't always have to be a one-shot kill. Just know that the uh, the option is there if you're stacking stuff right. He's close enough to the boss, so we're going to go ahead and switch to that. Stop throwing grenades at me, guys. Come on. Don't make me blind you. <laughs> he says as he doesn't move. Oh man, that uh, LMG guy over there is really causing some problems here. I don't think oh, that's oh, it's another sniper dog. Oh, good reinforcements are here. Good, or as I like to call them, distractions. <laughs> All right, you guys want to distract, please? So I can. Uh, Some work here. Should've, that should have downed him. Yeah, yeah. Little buddy, get back out there. Distract. See, I'm just I'm just not that great at shots sometimes. Not always, but we were doing good. I lost my rhythm. 
Okay, I'm going to let those two fight each other. What I really want to do is get on the roof of this building. I need to back up. Okay. Now I'm going to reposition. Don't see me, sniper dog. Don't see me. Let's climb faster. Must climb faster. There we go. Alright. This is where we want to be. Oh, who's over here? Oh, hello. Ha! Gonna hit the broad side of a barn. There we go. That one, they're that close. It's a different story. I don't know. Who else is out here? Sniper dog. This fool. Sniper dog taken care of. What's this guy? <laughs> I am so terrible at this sometimes. Incoming hostiles detected. Sorry, I disagree. That was that was a headshot. to the groove a little here. Heavily armored hostile detected. Yeah, we're good. So there was a couple spots in there where it shined and it kind of showed you what you can do if you're a better shot than I am. Um, but you get the idea. <laughs> One more time. Here's the build. Make it for yourself. Take it for a spin. Let me know what you think. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And I'll see you all in the next one.